Here we are again for another fun-filled expedition with 3D Steve. Hi, I'm Steve from 1233D. Today we are going to be doing a review of Creality's new scanner, the Raptor. First impressions, I'll start with the box. This is what you're going to be greeted with as soon as you purchase one of these. So Creality have provided this scanner in a very nice Peli case style case. It appears to have pressure relief valve on it and everything else. I shall unlock it and open it up so you can see what's inside. What's in the box? You've got a nice rubber seal all the way around. Good foam. It's an expensive piece of kit. You want to be looking after it and keeping it as protected as you can while you're not using it. So. This case is absolutely up to that job. So what I'll do is I'll start to remove the contents of the case and lay them out on the table and explain what they are as I'm doing so. I'll start with the most important piece of kit, which is the scanner. Nice ergonomic rubber grip. You've got controls built in. You've got zoom in, zoom out. You've got increase the brightness, decrease the brightness and your play start scanning button. To the base of the machine, there is a USB-C port where you plug the scanner into your laptop or PC. You've got rubber protection pretty much all around, so wherever you lay it on the table, you know that the body's gonna be protected, not get scratched up or anything like that. That's the scanner. So the next item we have, yeah. little box, is your power adapter. So the next item, this is the actual scanner lead, USB-C. You've got two screw connectors so that you can actually screw it into the scanner so you're not gonna accidentally pull it out while you're scanning. So that's on one end. The other end, you've got a USB connector and you've got a barrel connector for your power. So this will be what powers the scanner. This goes to your computer. It's a fair length lead, so you're not really limited by the length of the lead. You can keep your computer out of the way while you're walking around whatever objects as you're scanning. So underneath the foam, lift the foam out. You've then got another box. Inside this box we have your different country connectors. So here, UK plug, your power connector, literally click it, lock it into place. That's ready to go. We don't need the rest of those. We have a feltish type mat. That'll be for laying down, scanning objects on. Then we have this plate. Now this plate has on the back of it, has a QR code. Basically you scan the QR code. It'll then download the app to your computer. The other side of it, you've got reflective markers, and this is for calibration. When you get the scanner, the first thing that you'll do is run the, the calibration. The instructions are on the back of this, so very easy to do. Please carefully remove the calibration board from the packaging box, which we've done. Please follow the software instructions to complete the calibration, so through the software that Corality provide for the scanner. After calibration, please carefully place the calibration board back into the packaging box immediately. So in other words, they want you to keep this clean don't damage it because it'll always be the point of reference. So we'll pop that away. Quality instruction manual. Basically, it's a quick start guide into how you, you use the, the machine. Then we have another packet. Let's open that up. Inside there, quality service card. We have a packet full of reflective markers. So there's a wide selection. Quite a few there, so you're not going to run out of these very quickly. A small lint-free microfiber cloth to be cleaning the lens. And we've also got a USB-C adapter. And that is it for the contents of the box. So what I'll just briefly run over before we proceed any further is the key function of this scanner and what sets this slightly apart from other scanners and what features it has, what the benefits are and everything else. This scanner has been marketed as a two-in-one scanner. It works with IR infrared and blue light. IR is predominantly what most consumer grade scanners use. The more expensive industrial type scanners all use blue light. IR works from actually texture mapping the surface via the cameras. It's efficient to a point, however it's not ideal for large areas or really accurate scans. That's where the blue light comes into its own. Basically, you use the markers, the little sticky pads. You stick those either on the platform that you're going to place the object on to scan, or you can actually place them on the object that you're scanning. There is a set distance apart that these need to be. It tells you all of this in the instructions, and we'll look at that further when we move on to that point of the video. Basically, this is a two-in-one machine, very affordable price. Ideally, it will result in really, really high quality scans 
that will be beneficial to hobbyists right the way through to industry. You can use this for scanning car parts, even full car if you wanted to, right the way down to, to small scale figures. This machine has the capability to do all of it. There's another couple of features that they've added, so scanning human bodies. They've got a profile in the software that allows you to select face or body, and they've got some algorithms built in, so it really makes it quite easy to do that without having some of the problems that you would have encountered before with other, other types of scanners. So they thought of pretty much everything with this scanner. It's their top of the range model of scanner. So I hope that has answered questions for now. We'll proceed to get the scanner hooked up to the laptop and we'll run through some demonstrations. Okay, so for the first overall tests that we performed with the Coreality Raptor scanner, we had a go at SAM. We did a number of scans on SAM and found initially the sticking point of scanning a human was the hair. However, with a little bit of tinkering with the settings, we managed to get a scan that was successful and extremely high detailed. We shall share the pictures for that. However, with people, you are going to need to do some kind of post-processing after the scan. So basically, once you've scanned the person, even if you've had to do multiple scans and then patch them together in the software, you would then have to export that file into Blender and maybe smooth up some scene lines, fill in any slight imperfections, but overall, you're gonna get high quality facial details clothing and all of that type of thing straight away without too much effort and relatively quickly as well next up we thought we would try a metallic object with the blue light laser for this we used markers we did actually 3d print some markers and stuck the reflective stickers to the markers in an attempt to give us a better result and it makes the markers reusable because you can just use these things over and over and over again we will put a link to the file that we use for those in the description the calipers scanned extremely well to be fair we weren't expecting huge results from such a metallic surface and we'll show you a picture of the actual calipers and the scan result that we got but overall highly detailed very accurate, another win for the blue light scanning. The next item we tried was a porcelain ornament with some detailed carving in the figurine. We put this model onto a turntable, manually rotated by hand while we scanned the object under normal mode in IR scan. The results that we achieved are absolutely phenomenal. We will share the images of this scan so you can see the photorealism and the printed item as well. We thought we would try and get a detailed scan of a model car. We scanned the car twice, so we sat it on the turntable with IR mode enabled, normal scan, medium size. One thing that I would point out when scanning any object, as soon as you start scanning, try and pick a point that's going to give you as many reference points on the scan as possible. This way, it will help you to maintain tracking. And if you do lose tracking, you've got a lot of points to reference back to to regain tracking. This is one of the things that we've picked up and noticed, and it works incredibly well on both modes, IR and blue light. So the car was quite a glossy finish. The problem that we encountered with it, it didn't like scanning the clear windows. They're ultimately highly polished, clear perspex, so they were very reflective. It didn't really like doing those, but we did manage to get a good scan that would be very very easy to clean up within a third party software like Blender or ZBrush. The plus side with the software is that you get a good range bar for optimal distance. It's easy to read, very intuitive. It gives you quite a wide range for scanning. Unlike some of the earlier models, you only have to be a couple of centimeters away and you lost tracking. With the Raptor scanner, that isn't the case. You can turn the model back and it will pick up on the last track point that it scanned and resume scanning from that point. And just for a bit of fun, we actually scanned a sausage roll just to see how it reacted to different textures. We scanned one side under, under IR, we flipped it over, we then scanned it again from the opposite side, then we meshed it together, 3D printed it, pictures will be on screen. So really, the whole process with the Raptor scanner, we found it to be very good once we'd actually come to grips with how to use it and the different functions that were needed to use it successfully. For reverse engineering purposes, 
i.e. anybody that wants to scan a component for an engine bay or make an add-on part for a car bumper, replicate ornaments or do 3D scans of people, the scanner will do that. Overall, it's a very, very capable machine for a wide range of applications. Simple things like the ornament that we've scanned, absolutely no problem with scanning those items, cleaning them up a little bit and printing them straight away. That That's really, really easy to do. With complicated objects, they will not be print ready. For your more complex things, there is going to be a need for a little bit of clean up just to get the mesh in a good state. So overall, we're impressed with the Raptor scanner. The beauty of this machine is you've got a two-in-one hybrid scanner. You've got blue light and you've got IR, both in one nice compact unit. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do not forget to like and subscribe. Check out the link in the description for the Raptor scanner available from 123.3D. And if you've got any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments box below. I hope you've enjoyed this video and we will catch you on the next one. As always, we aim to have the most competitive 3D printer prices on the market. If you see any of our printers being sold by a mainstream retailer for less, please drop us an email using the link in the description and we'll do our very best to beat their price. Also, if you're watching from outside the UK, check the description for links to our European 123 3D sister stores.